Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm so excited that you all are with me. I know you've been looking forward to this interview and we have a wonderful interview with some of the cast members of the hit movie All Eyes on Me that was released June the 16th and that happened to be Tupac Shakur's birthday. Without further ado, let's get into the interview. Well, as you know, All Eyes on Me was a hit in the box office and many of you supported it and you love the characters. My interview uh, is with two of the co-cast members in the movie. This young man plays Suge Knight and he did such a marvelous job with his demeanor, his look. He had everything down pat. He's none other than Dominic L. Santana. And we also have another young man by the name of James Hatter. We're going to tell you about him and his character. We got some other people coming on. Now, in the beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, we uh, have an interview. We had an interview with uh, the, the character who played Tupac Shakur, none other than Demetrius Ship and his dad. We've been playing phone tag, so we're still waiting on them. But we're going to give you this piece of this interview, and there'll be a part two later, all right? So sit back and enjoy, and we're going to get ready to get into it with our special guest. Please welcome to the show, Herm Randall, Dominic Santana, and James Hatter. How you doing, guys? Hello, hello. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's going on, Herm? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> he finally got back to us, man. <laughs> I, man. See, I see it's a party going on. All of you, this, is this like a reunion, James, uh, Dominic, and Herm? Is this a reunion? Well, yeah. it's been long since we've seen each other, but yeah. Kind of like a phone you always miss Herm. <laughs> you always miss Herm. <laughs> Herm. <laughs> I heard Herm. I heard you were a character. I heard you kept it popping, and they, you know, had kept it fun on set. You said what now? I heard you kept it fun. You keep us laughing and all that good stuff. Oh on. yeah, definitely. You know, always. <laughs> Wonderful. It was fun. Fun being on set. I'm sure it was. Let me start off. I want to start off with Dominic. Dominic, just uh, say hello to our audience and tell us. Uh, we we kind of know who you uh, the character you played, but tell us again and tell us a little bit about yourself, Dominic. Uh, well, hey, well, how y'all doing out there? Thank you for joining us. Uh, I play I play the character Suge Knight and All Eyes on Me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an actor. I've been acting for uh, been in the business. Professionally, probably about 10 years. Okay. Um, I like long walks on the beach, ice cream at sunset. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Wonderful. James, tell us about you. Introduce yourself, Mr. James Hatter III, and your character you played, and a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I play... Gaddafi of the Outlaws, that's a uh, Tupac's group. Uh, he was actually a uh, Tupac's dime brother. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he uh, started, the, he was one of the founding members of the Outlaws, so their uh, bond was close knit from the jump when they were kids. Yeah. And being myself, uh, this is my first, first bit of acting, getting into the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a real eye-opening experience for me, mm -hmm. and definitely looking to pursue it even further. Wonderful. Herm, introduce yourself. Tell us uh, the part that you played. And just tell us a little bit about yourself and all the uh, long walks on the beach that you like. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm playing uh, Tupac Friend. Um, I've been acting mm, about on and off about 15 years. Okay. This is actually my, uh, it's like my first uh, real speaking role. So it's exciting. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what I do. Wonderful. Now, you know, when I first saw the movie and when I first saw the, the silhouette of Tupac, maybe I got a little emotional, but that was a powerful visual. Here's a young man with the world, you know, in his hands and he's looking out at the audience, he's performing and you see his silhouette. And I got a bit emotional because I'm like, wow, we lost a giant in the industry. No matter if you agreed with him or not, you agree with his music or not, we lost some talent. So tell me about playing this role, these roles, because you truly had to come with it to tell this story, to make it real. So tell me about that and how you prepared yourself for that. 
Who you want first? Uh, Dominique. Let's start with Dominique. All right. Uh, uh, me, one of the main things about me, especially my involvement that was so personal to me was, uh, you know, I've been a Tupac fan in real life for, you know, since I was a little kid. Okay. And so, you know, and being an actor is something I never even really envisioned that, you know, and I've done probably 20, 21 different, uh, you know, TV and movie projects. Mm -hmm. And it still has never crossed my mind that I could play Shirk Knight. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when I got the opportunity, my agent, you know, when, the, when it first came out, my agent submitted me for it. And then I had to audition like four times and I ended up being for two different directors, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, so for me, it was, you know, it was more than just a job. It was, um, and it's always more than a job for me, but some things are more so, uh, you know, I'm happy to do it because of the business move it is or whatever. But for this particular project, you know, I was one of the fans that was like, when are they going to do a Tupac movie? Yeah. And so to not only get to see it, you know, but also have such a, uh, a big part of it, that was like a bucket list. For me, I didn't even have that on my bucket list. Wow! <laughs> yeah, it became it became one of the, one of the biggest bucket list items, you know, when that opportunity presented itself. Mm -hmm. And you know, on the business aspect, you know, sometimes I would sit back like, "Wow, you know, I'm really getting paid to sit here and you know take part in you know a piece of Tupac's legacy and listen to Tupac music all day." And then be around Demetrius, who looked like Pac. And, yeah. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just the whole, whole aspect of crazy. Absolutely. Now, did you have to audition throwing some um, smushing pie and food in someone's face to get that part down? down <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, it's funny. Actually, that, you know, none of that was in the uh, auditioning. Okay. Uh, funny enough, I, I will tell you uh, something that's real cool about uh, my story, at least, mm -hmm. is... Um, I originally, like I said, I auditioned four times, but on the fourth time, uh, that's when I first saw Demetrius. Mm -hmm. I was actually sitting, waiting to go in and meet. Uh, it was my first time meeting Benny Boone as well. Yeah. And I was just sitting there waiting. And Demetrius, he was already cast as Tupac, but he was there at the production office doing something else. Mm -hmm. And he was leaving when they were getting ready to do the stuff with us. And so when he walked out, I was like, oh, well, I know who's playing Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he walked, he left, and then so, you know, they got to me, and they, you know, I did the audition with them uh, for the fourth time, and they liked it, mm -hmm. and uh, Benny Boom, Benny Boom was like, hey, hold on, he's like, man, hey, man, you got uh, time to stick around, and I was like, yeah, I mean, this is what I'm here for, like, all, all day if you need me, I'm here, Yeah. and so he was like, all right, can we get somebody to go back and get Demetrius, because Demetrius was staying at a hotel around there somewhere at the time, mm -hmm. and so they sent somebody to pick up Demetrius and bring him right back to the production office, and they were like, we really want to see y'all's chemistry together, Yeah. and so, excuse me, so they put, you know, me and Demetrius together with the phenomenal uh, acting coach, An Angela Gibbs, mm -hmm. and, you know, she worked with us for about 15 minutes, and they threw a new scene at us, mm -hmm. but the new scene they threw at us, well, it was new to me, it wasn't new to him, but the scene they threw at us were, was the Clinton prison facility mm -hmm. that you see, you know, turn out to be, you know, as far as my work is concerned, it turned out to be some of people's favorite moments, yeah. one of their favorite moments when he goes to bail Tupac out of jail. Mm -hmm. And so that was the moment that they looked and was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So when I came out and they got done with us, me and Denise just walked out, and by that point, it was like 8 o'clock at night, so most of the office was clear. It was just me and Demetrius out in the hallway, mm -hmm. and he looked at me, he was like, you got this, bro. Mm -hmm. I was like, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. And Dominic, you started off as an extra, correct? You were just, you you had some extra roles, is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're going to bring up all the stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do my homework, I'm a journalist. Yeah, about 13 years ago. Yeah, and I. 12, 13 years ago, I started, I started out being an extra on uh, Tupac's Legacy. Yeah, I did I bring that up, Dominique, because so many people want to do what you're doing, and there's a lot of extras out there. Um, you know, I started off as an extra, and they don't believe that it can lead to bigger things, but you have to take baby steps in this industry uh, to really learn and submerge yourself in it. So I'm proud of you, and that that's awesome because you are proof positive that, you know, the, the, the small steps lead to bigger, bigger opportunities. Right, right. Definitely, and the main thing about being an extra 
when I went out there, it was a lot of guys that was out there would go out there to get an easy check, free food, and <laughs> work with girls all day. Mm-hmm. When I went out there, I was going to school. Yeah. I couldn't afford, at that time, I couldn't afford to go to no film school or anything like that. So my way of learning how a film set really operates and who does what yeah. was going and sitting for 12 hours out on the film set and watching and getting to know Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. I'm going to switch to James. James, tell us about your, well, you've already told us about yourself, your character. How was that playing your character? Tell me about that and how'd you prepare yourself and, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh, it was definitely a surreal moment just to, just to be a part of the whole experience of being actually shooting something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never imagined in my wildest dreams that, hey, you're going to be sitting in the movie theater and watch yourself on screen. Yeah. Wonderful. Herm, let's move to you. Tell us uh, about your experience, Herm, and all that good stuff. Uh, all right, so it's been a long process uh, with this whole, you know, Tupac movie. Mm-hmm. And um, Demetrius side he's actually my best friend. We grew up together. Okay. And um, this is about uh, six years ago, 2011. Um, they did a nationwide casting for Tupac. Mm-hmm. And he had to do uh, a YouTube video. He had to do a monologue. And I sing like two songs or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I told Demetrius about it, and he was like, uh, "Nah, bro, I ain't gonna do it. Like, I don't wanna do it." And I'm just like, "Bro, you gotta do this. Like, you have to do this." Mm-hmm. He's like, nah, I don't, I don't wanna do it, bro. Like, you get too fucked all the time, you might as well. So he procrastinated until the very last day mm-hmm. that it had to be. Wow. I want to talk about this, guys. We're going to get back to you, but, um, you know, there were some mixed reviews about the movie. Um, If you really don't understand the industry, you really don't understand the hard work behind any production, let alone getting it into the theaters. That's a whole nother story. Movies just don't get into the theaters. It's a process. And so um, 
there are some people that have different opinions, but I, I'm, I'm one. And again, everybody, they are, um, they, they can have their own opinion, you know, that's, that's okay. But how do we learn how to support one another? Because I believe in, you know, certain things, you know, are constructive criticism, but it's already hard enough for a lot of, uh, I'm going to say this, uh, African Americans to break into this industry. So when you have a blockbuster, a, a biopic, a historical biopic, such as Tupac Shakur, you know, all eyes on me. And then you have some people who are saying this and that. How do you get the message over that we have to support one another, regardless of what you think, we have to support one another? Had dropped a 
another huge franchise. Everybody yeah. knows June and July is blockbuster season. Correct. You don't drop your, your $40 million movie in between 200 plus million dollar budget movies. Yeah. They usually wait like straight out of content, came out in August. Mm -hmm. Or they wait toward the end of July or the fall. Okay. And they did that knowing they would lose some money because of the stiff competition, but they wanted to honor Tupac so much mm -hmm. that they said, forget about the money that it'll cost us by releasing in the middle of all these giant parks. We mm -hmm. still want to honor Tupac's birthday and yeah. make that Tupac Day. Yeah. And they did that. I don't even know how. Like, that's another one that was like, I don't know, how did you go to Lionsgate and convince them to release this movie in the middle of these giants? Yeah. When they normally would never do that. Absolutely. You know, but yeah. they did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. had like John Singleton, who was involved with the project, they had creative differences. Instead of being let bygones be bygones and walk on, he also, I don't know if he looked over and saw Jaden and was like, well, hell, now they can't just blame me. And he went on his tirade. Mm -hmm. Now all that does all that did, did it hurt all eyes on me? No. Did it hurt, you know, any of us personally or physically? No. But mm -hmm. what did it do? Well, all it did was make, you know, people who make these decisions to dole out cash for budgets for films, mm -hmm. it made them go, well, you know, for the next filmmakers coming up wanting to do a, a mostly minority cast yeah. or something about, you know, our, quote unquote, our stories, mm -hmm. they're like, man, look at all the drama that comes with that. If they don't like a movie or something in it, they get out publicly and bash it. Why don't we, let's do, let's do a biopic on a rock star. We at least know if they don't like it, they're not going to get out and go on radio towards bashing it. Yeah. So all you do is make it harder for all the next ones that's coming. Because I guarantee you, all the next ones that's coming after this, trying to make a film as well, mm -hmm. or something like this, mm -hmm. they're going to have twice as hard of a time because of the attacks that the studios got to sit back and watch happen on our movie. Yeah, and and you know what? Um, because you you all are gifted and talented as well. We don't want you to be a one hit movie wonder. I don't want to see that. I want to see James flourish. I want to see Dominic flourish. I want to see Herm flourish. I want to see you accepting your Grammys, accepting your Emmys. So we have to pull together as a people and support. And sometimes the best way, I, I hear people all the time saying, well, I'm just being real. I'm just, well, sometimes you just need to be real silent and just <laughs> keep it to yourself. If it's not positive. You can make, you can make, you can make real phone calls in private. Absolutely. 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 Well, guys, I, I just appreciate you because you are you know, doing and fulfilling your dream. And let's talk about that. Can you tell me some obstacles that have may happened in your life? Just really quick. And well, the number one obstacle, if you don't mind me, Dominic, I'm just going to throw this out here, Hearn and James. Everybody deals with haters. And sometimes people think because like you guys have made it, you don't deal with that. You don't deal with naysayers. You don't deal with negative friends, family, but you, you really do because you're still real pe people. You're still human. How do you ignore the naysayers and keep it moving? Because I get this question all the time. So I always ask my celebrities, how do you deal with it? How do you move past that and stay focused on your dreams? Wonderful. What about you, Herm? I think, uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> people that people that be hating on things, it just they they hate people that hate to see you win. Yeah. I think I think for the fact that um, they can't do what you can do, or they um, you know they. Herm sandwich. They having a Herm a Subway sandwich since their name is in your mouth. It's a joke. We'll keep it. <laughs> oh, I thought you did. I thought you did order the sandwich. 
the herb sandwich because you said they, you know, they're like your name is in their mouth. They're eat okay. I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. I got you, Herm. I got you, man. <laughs> and, and and Dominic, what about you? Because I mean, uh, again, you had a a, a a leading role as well. So how do you? I'm sure you had some people like, uh, he really don't look like him, or he, and you really did. So how how do you how do you deal with the naysayers and all that good stuff? How do you how do you handle that? Oh man, um, yeah. I mean, it's funny because. Absolutely. Okay, guys, I'm going to interject really quick. I just want to remind my audience, we are talking from the co-stars of the hit movie, All Eyes on Me, the Tupac Shakur biopic. We're talking to the young man who played Suge Knight, who did an amazing job, Mr. Dominic L. Santana, and Tupac's friend, Herm Randall. And you know what? I always have trouble saying this name. So James Hatter, you got to tell me your character again, because I'm not going to mess it up. Go for it. <laughs> His name is Yaki Gaddafi. Yes, Yaki Gaddafi. <laughs> Three amazing young men doing their thing. Now, guys. Uh, yeah. What just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> guys they really do i've had people come to me and say deshaun i want to act and my my first question is okay what classes have you had what what have you done because people always want the hookup 
And in this industry, yes, you know, you can, you can uh, uh, miraculously be chosen or you can do the work that Dominic, you've done, James, you've done, Herm, you're experiencing. I love what you said, Dominic. And also you have an acting class coming up. Can we talk about that just a little bit, Dominic? Uh, yeah, yeah. Every, uh, every so often I, I do it. It's a blue moon when I do it, but every so often, uh, you know, I hold a, uh, and I more so only really done it in Wilmington. Okay. Uh, just because I started my, I started my acting career in Wilmington. Mm-hmm. James, I want to go back to you. I love it because you're not just an actor. You are totally, you're very talented, and you're also an advocate and a humanitarian. Tell us about some of your causes that you represent. Absolutely. Okay. And, and guys, let me just say this. Um, I'm going to go back to the movie and we're going to wrap this up in a moment because um, I'm a, I, like I said, I told you what time that we were going to do this and I like to be true to my word, but if you have more time, we'll stay on, we'll stay on the line. Okay. But I, I want to go back to the movie. Um, this is just for me. I'm sure other people have another opinion, but this is how I felt when I watched the movie. Again, we know that we lost Tupac, you know, but when the movie came out and I was watching it, my heart sunk because in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, here is a great talent, a great young black man who had so much going for him and someone takes his life. It hit home to me because I thought about you guys as I was preparing this interview. I said to myself, and I even prayed about it. I said, God, you know, here are three talented, strong men who are intelligent, who can, uh, who can do anything. And I would never want their life to end up that way. And, you know, not trying to get deep, but for you guys, well, for me, let me go back to me. <laughs> it just made me appreciate and want to support our men, our African-American men. And I, I just want to put this in your ear. I know, you know, the entertainment industry is a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot to do. It's a lot to see. But in my heart, and I, I just believe that this interview is ordained, I believe that you all, you guys are meant to be examples. I do. And I just, I just want to put in your ear, I'm, I'm proud of you, and I want your life to be different. I don't, want, I don't want it to turn out like everybody else. Like I want you to be and inspire and do. And so I just want to encourage you to be you, but you know, have fun. But 
you know, keep, keep, keep it going. You don't have to get into the drama, the mess. What's, what's your, what's your, what's your mindset on that? Cause I know everybody's at you. Everybody wants probably every woman's trying to talk to y'all. Every baby mama trying to be y'all. Try, they trying to get y'all to be their baby daddy. <laughs> they, they trying to, they want y'all to pay their bills and you're not doing that. Cause you got to make money for yourself and your no, family. Definitely not doing that. <laughs> so, and I, you know, I want the best for you guys because you are, you know, you are our, you're not just our future. You're our present. We're, we're we're looking up to you, Dominic. We're looking up to you, Herm. We're looking up to you, James. So tell, give me, give me your thoughts on that. Uh, well, you know, one one thing, uh, and I agree with you on that. Um, I, I I've seen other entertainers, either in music or film, you know, say say some similar things. There's some really great ones, but then there's a couple out there that say things like, "Oh, I'm not a role model." Or, I ain't trying to be this, I ain't trying to be that, and they don't care about social issues and things like that. But the thing, the fact that remains is when you garner this much attention from your work, mm -hmm. you may not get into it to be like, oh, I'm going to be an actor and, you know, an activist or this or that. And I'm not even saying you got to be a quote-unquote activist. Right. But when you're in that position, it doesn't matter anymore. Right. Like, whatever you give off, if you give off negativity, you're influencing people. Yeah. If you give off positivity, you're influencing people whether you want to or not. And whether if you, you want don't to want not. that responsibility, then you need to go sit down somewhere and leave it to people who can handle that responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. And we definitely want to have fun. We definitely, I ain't going to lie, you know, I hit the parties, you know, I do all, you know. Dominic, you, know, you was at the party. You know. Dominic, you was at the party. You was in the parties. <laughs> with, with, with. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> But you're being good, right, Dominic? You're being good, right? You're being good. Mm -hmm. But no, you know, it's a, it's a huge responsibility with that. So I'm aware of that as well as I believe in having balance. So I'm the type of person, like, I'm going to hit the party. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, uh, you know, have my fun and take trips and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I also am well aware that, you know, the community is looking, you know, to us. And things we do and say do affect, you know, the mindset of our community. Yeah. And so, you know, that's why, you know, you take those opportunities to go, okay, I'm doing this over here. I got success over here. And I like to, because one of the things I do is I like to go and talk to, you know, high school students and junior high kids and just motivate them. Yeah. You know, just be that somebody that, because for me, you know, I was an NBA player, you know, and I was living in, you know, living in the projects and, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't really be around anybody that's, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. So we went to get autographs at an autograph signing. And I got, you know, 10 seconds with my favorite NBA player at that time. And he could have been a jerk, you know, because there was a lot of commotion and they were trying to rush out. But instead he stopped and he took those few seconds before he left out to make, a, make an impression. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that. So for me, I always remember that what we have the power to do, especially in the minds of these kids. Yes. You know, and how we can help and give back. And like one of the other things I'm doing I never even imagined this. I always wanted to go to Africa, but I didn't know how it was going to be, you know, which way that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I actually just, on an airplane, coming back, you know, sitting in first class, talked to this uh, this old white guy sitting next to me. Mm -hmm. And me and him are talking about what we do. And, you know, he informs me, you know, what he does. And he happens to be a director for this uh, this really great organization called So We Help. Mm -hmm. And so we got to talking about that. And, you know, he was like, he was telling me, like, you know, one of the things we actually had looked at trying to figure out how to, like, gather some celebrities and get them to go with us on one of the trips just to kind of shed light on what we do yeah. a little more. Yeah. And I was like, well, I know some celebrities. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so now, fast, fast forward through all that, now, you know, we've gotten together, had meetings, met with other directors. We met with uh, their Kenyan director. And so now, you know, I'm taking a group of a few people I know, and then uh, I also brought on, it morphed into something else, I brought on my producing partner, and now we're uh, going to take a whole film crew. Wow. We're going to film a documentary over there about what this organization does with these orphan African children mm. in Kenya. Yeah. And how they teach them to be self-sufficient and become, you know, business owners and be able to take care of themselves instead of waiting for groups to come and throw, you know, bread and rice at them yeah. for a month 
and then they leave and go home, and then the kids start them the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. You know, they teach them to be self-sufficient. So we're going to film that, make a documentary, and release it, and in the hopes that, you know, the world will stop and watch and see what this organization is doing, and hope that that becomes a gift that keeps on giving for them. Yeah. Dominique, I want to support that. When you do that, I want you to make sure that Fort Wayne gets it so we can uh, air it here, we can play it here, we can support you. Okay? Okay? Can, can, can we do that? Oh, yeah. Well, definitely. I'd love that. Can I, can I go with you guys, Dominique? <laughs> now, the, the trip's already been set, man. I, I can't, can't help there, but... <laughs> I'm just playing with you. I'm just messing with you. Okay, no problem. We want to support, okay? So we'll talk after, you know, after the interview. We'll talk. We just want to support you. <laughs> okay, guys, to wrap this up, um, like I said, James and Herm, I want to hear from you really quick. What is your, what is your, what are you doing to be that example, that role model in your hometown with your family, around the people that surround you? What are you doing? Herm. Is Herm just being silly? <laughs> Just laughing. Uh, well, um, I just, I have um, a few of my friends that have uh, been going up, that, that's, I've become a rapper and everything. Mm -hmm. and I just try to be a supportive thing with them and, um, you know, just uplift them. And because I always want, I want, I want everyone to succeed. Yeah. You know, I want everyone, everyone to be successful. And so I try to support as much as I can with anything. If you ask me for anything, you can help me out with this little move, I got you. You know, I want you to make it. So yeah. we all gonna we all gonna get it. So that's what I that's what I've been doing. And you James, of course we talked a little bit about you, but you know, you are an example. You are a leader now. Absolutely. One last question. What's next for you guys? What's your next projects? What can we look forward to seeing you on the silver screen, black screen, white screen, any screen? What you going to be doing? Dominic, <laughs> you got to tell me. I got, I got, I got to wait for the powers that be. Okay. Um, they start making announcements, then I can talk. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm gonna let you off the hook today, but not the next time, okay? <laughs> Well, guys, I so appreciate you. Thank you so much. You are so down to earth and you totally represent us so well. And I just know you're going to succeed and do well. And I'm just excited for you. I truly am. I feel like y'all are my brothers. Can you be my brothers? 
So you got a chocolate sister in Fort Wayne, okay? Indiana. Just tell your mommy about me. She didn't know your dad. It's a joke. <laughs> But on a serious note, thank you. On the other side. Yes, on the other side. <laughs> yes. Well, again, thank you so much. I'm going to be in touch. And let me tell you, please thank your publicists. They are the best. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank them for me, Dominic and James and Herm, your manager. <laughs> and I just... <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys. I'm going to let you go. Thank you again so much. I'm going to be in touch. We have so much more that we want to do for you all. I want you also to be featured in MGM Magazine. How about that? Oh, let's talk. Okay, let's let's we we can talk about that. Yes, yes you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> you, 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 you have not because you asked not. So you asked and you get, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, you guys. Pardon me? Well, well, guess what? Hey. Yes, absolutely. Well, you're asking and you, you put it, hey, you put it out there. So you, you're going to get it, Herm, okay? Not the GoFundMe. <laughs> GoFundMe. Okay. But, oh, guys, before we go, before we go, I have to do this. Okay. This is the last question or the last statement, okay? I, I, I believe I, I believe in divine connections, and I believe that God does things for a reason. And what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, can I pray you all? Can I pray for you all before we leave this interview? Oh, yes. All right. No all right. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. I bless you for James and Dominic and Herm. I thank you for, Lord, opening up doors that no man can shut and shutting doors that no man can open. Father, I just ask you to bless them abundantly, Father God. Lord, I thank you for their gifts because every perfect gift comes from you. God, we dedicate their gift back to you, God. We thank you, Father, for just blessing them and giving them this platform, Father, that, Lord, you can shine through them and you can prove to everybody that with God all things are possible God God I just ask you to protect them God keep them Lord protect their families God let your angels be with them while they're traveling God wherever they are God you protect them and keep them Father God and we just bless you and we praise you and we honor you for this time in Jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen. amen. You all are something else. <laughs> I, I thank you. I thank you guys. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs> have a wonderful evening, and we'll be talking soon. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night.